Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. This is a T SQL tutorial and we're going to be talking about Replicate. Replicate is a built in function in SQL and we're going to go through the following examples uh, padding, which is adding leading zeros to a value, which is quite common. And we're also going to be doing something that I find really cool and it's creating a histogram in SQL Server and that enables us to have a more visual image of the data in SQL Server Management Studio itself so stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll go over to SQL Server Management Studio now and we'll go through some examples. Okay so to start with I'm creating a new table so as you can see here, we're just checking simply whether this invoice table exists. If it does, we're going to drop it. We're then going to go ahead and create the table. So we're creating an invoice table uh, that consists of invoice key, which is an identity column. So that's going to be an auto increasing integer for us. We're going to have invoice number, uh, which is a string set to 10 characters and then we're going to have invoice amount. Then what we've got here is actually a loop. Um, so we're going to be using a while loop to insert data into this table. And we're just going to be inserting 10 rows of data for us to work with. So it's just a small sample. Um, so we're going to be inserting an invoice number and an invoice amount. Um, we're just taking advantage again of some built-in functions here. So I'm taking the value of i. So each time this runs through, i is going to go change from the value of 1 to 10. And each time it's going to raise that value to the power of 3 to give us uh, an invoice number. We're also going to be using the rand function, which generates a random number between 0 and 1. And then what we're going to do is multiply that by a thousand times the square root as uh, this the squared value of i. So again, we're just using these functions here to generate some random data. Um, but what's important is I want to create variations between that data. So I'm using a couple of built-in functions, uh, and I'm just casting that as a decimal uh, ten two. Um, so we'll go ahead and run this query now uh, and we'll see we've got a select statement at the bottom of the screen so we'll see the results straight away. Uh, now as we are using the RAND function if you're following along with this video you may get different values to myself it's non-deterministic it won't generate the same value every time and you'll also see we may want to run it a couple of times because we do want to create some variation between that data. So I'm going to go ahead and execute now and we have our results. So we can see our variation in invoice numbers. What I wanted was a different number of um, characters uh, represented. So we've got, uh, we've got one character, two characters, three characters and four characters. Uh, and we've also got some randomness in the invoice amounts as well. This isn't actually random, it's just raising the value of invoice key to the power of three. Uh, but invoice amount is actually a random value, so that is where you may see some differences as well. Let's open up a new query window and we'll take this select statement across with us as our starting point. So the first example we're going to go through is adding leading zeros. So the invoice number column is set as a fixed string of 10 characters and we want to add leading zeros to that value. So it's an invoice number, it's going to be automatically generated. The 10 characters give us some range uh, to generate a large number of invoices. With invoices, traditionally you'd have an incrementing number, but this is just an example here as looking at the replicate function. Um, typically, when I've added leading zeros in the past, I've always um, added them as concatenation and then and then use trim. But replicate's actually 
quite a, a slimline alternative, and it's a it's a cool function. As when we get onto the histograms, you'll see, uh, and I quite like it for that purpose. So we're just going to simply start with just looking at our invoice number. So I'll just select the invoice number, just to narrow our query down a bit. So what we actually want to return is each invoice number should be 10 characters. As we can see in the first row we've got an invoice number of 1, so that should be have 9 leading zeros. In the 10th row we've got 1000, so that should have, which is 4 digits, and that should have 6 leading zeros. So we'll have a look at replicate and how we can use that to add leading zeros or, or pad our, our strings. So we'll just talk about the syntax of replicate. So I'm just going to write out uh, a basic select, uh, not from any table, but we can see we've got here replicate. We have uh, an expression, which is a string value of one. So what do we want to replicate? And then another expression, which is an integer value, is how often do we want to replicate it? So I'm just going to put a asterisk and I'm just going to say we'll replicate that five times. So this just gives you an introduction into the syntax of replicate. Uh, and when we look at the results, we can see that that's returned the asterisk replicated five times for us. So now we're going to look at how we can use that to add leading zeros. So if I go ahead and go back to the original query. So in this sense, what we want to do is wrap our invoice number within replicate. Uh, and we want to actually add zero. Now notice we we have the data stored as strings. If you have got it stored as integer values, you will have to do some uh, data type conversion for, for this to work. Um, so just bear that in mind if you ever come across that situation. So we're going to add leading zeros. That's our symbol we want to replicate. Now what we need to determine is how many do we need to add. And we're going to use another built-in function. And what we're going to do is just calculate the length of the invoice number. So I'm just going to wrap that within len. So we're not using data length, we're just using len. Data length will always return 10, whereas len returns the actual length of the string in each row. And in this case, we know we want to, so we're just wrapping invoice number. Um, and in this case, we know we want to return a string length of 10. So we're going to say 10 minus the length of invoice number. So that's going to return our leading zeros. So I'm just going to break that down a bit. Um, let's just close that replicate. It's not exactly what we want at the moment, but I'm just going to return the len of invoice number as well. And we'll just remove this from the query. So we can see here ln is the length of the string and then here we have got the number of zeros that are being replicated minus the length of that. So we're saying 10 minus the length, so in this case it's going to be 10 minus 1 and that's how many times we want to replicate 0. So we'll see as we go down that those values are returning correct. We've got a, a length here of 4 so we're returning six zeros. And then what we need to do last of all is add these to the invoice number. So we're just going to say plus invoice number. And if we go ahead and look at the results of that, we can see we've now added our leading zeros. So as we're applying some manipulation, I'm just going to give that the name back of invoice number let's add in the other columns which I can't remember what I called them invoice key and invoice amount we'll remove the len that was just for demonstration purposes and invoice amount 
So if we go ahead and execute that now, we can see that that's how our, that's the result set we were trying to achieve. We wanted to add our leading zero, so all of those string values would have 10 characters. And that's what we've managed to achieve there. So if we needed to, we could go ahead and update those values using that built-in function. So we'll actually go ahead and do that. So we're going to write out an update statement. So we're going to be updating our invoice table. We want to set our invoice number equals, we'll just copy this. from our select and in this case we're going to be updating all of the invoice numbers this is just a small table typically we'll have a where clause we could say where len invoice number not equal to 10 and that will save us having to update any values that are correct perhaps we have a large table where there's only a small number of values that are incorrect so I'm just going to go ahead and update that data now. And if we have a look at what that table is now. We can see that our invoice numbers now show correctly. So that's a good example of how we can use replicate to pad or add leading zeros to our data. And it's quite a common thing that I've come across, so it's it's quite a useful um, example there. I've often had to add leading zeros to certain fields because they have to be a certain length, uh, and quite common they'll just be set as integers, and I have to make a lot of different changes. So let's move on to the second example now, which is one of my favourites which is where we're going to actually create a histogram in SQL Server uh, in the management studio. Um, so that can be considered like a, a visual representation. So I'm just going to walk you through the steps and why I would create this. So we've got invoice amount here. Uh, imagine if we had uh, a lot more values. Um, I've just used a small amount of values for this example and I wanted to create a lot of variation between the data. Now scrolling through this it's I have to read the numbers it's hard it's hard for me to see at speed what the difference is and let's say I want to quickly identify what what are the major invoices where 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 do we need to spend the most money where do we need to invest our attention um, and this could be it doesn't it's not specific to invoices but any any numerical value that we need to see at speed uh, where the major numbers are um, and we're going to have a look at how we could do that so we're going to start off with having a look at a percentage of the total so we're going to just select all columns just for simplicity and then what we want to calculate is a percentage of the total. So if we say invoice amount, and we want to divide that by the total to give us to give us this percentage. Um, so this is where we're actually going to use a Windows function. We're going to sum invoice amount. We're going to say over. Um, we must have an order by, but in this case. Uh, the order doesn't actually matter and we don't need to partition by anything we're actually looking to return the total so if I just give that a, uh, an alias as percent of total if I go ahead and execute that now we've got our percent here um, this isn't obviously this is a, a long decimal number that isn't of any use to us so to start with, we're going to multiply that by 100. Uh, and that will actually give us a decimal amount. And then we're going to cast that to an integer value. So we will lose the decimal part. Um, we're just going to cast it to an integer value.
and what we may lose here is the total exactly adding up to 100 but that's fine for this purposes it doesn't have to be exact it's not a, an exact science what we're looking for is a quick visual representation of where where we have to focus our attention so we now have that number and we're going to use that number within our replicate to create a histogram so just as a starting point I'm just going to copy this column I'm going to leave it within the results grid so we've just got some visibility of that uh, and we're just going to alias this as histogram uh, and histogram is a key reserved keyword in SQL Server um, some of the statistics that are maintained are maintained within histograms so let's go ahead and have a look how we can now use replicate using that integer value to create a histogram so if I say replicate and now I want to add the character that I want to replicate and asterisk is a particularly good one um, let's just add a comma on the end of there so we're going to replicate our asterisk by that integer value uh, and we'll just need to close down uh, replicate here so that's quite um, quite detailed but we've broken it down into steps so hopefully you'll be able to follow along and see clearly the steps we've gone through to build up that so when we're using built-in functions particularly with um, strings um, we can end up with something that looks quite extensive um, but once you break it down into steps we can see what's happening let's have a look at the results and we can see here clearly this is our, our highest invoice value and this is what I mentioned at the start where I was using the RAND function that I wanted to create some variation with the data I didn't want every histogram column to, to be exactly the same um, so that's how we can get a quick visual representation in SQL Server using Replicate which I think is very useful but let me know your thoughts in the comments below really hope you have enjoyed that video um, you may not have come across replicate before but hopefully you'll be able to incorporate it now and certainly learn what it's all about and how to use it and I thought I'd set you a little challenge now so see if you can create the below pattern using replicate and as a hint you'd have to store some integer values within one of the columns within the table to create this pattern but it is quite fun if you want to have a play around with replicate to see the sort of patterns you can create thanks a lot for watching uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you have enjoyed the video please do hit that thumbs up button if you haven't, let me know why in the comments below. And if there's any other videos you'd like to see or any other content on my channel, please do let me know. Thanks a lot for watching.